for your peace of mind, all our panniers have non-fly-off hinged lids. Metal Mule. Engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV. The Adventure Motorcycle Market is no different to retailing anywhere. It's subject to the whims of fashion and trends. It moves and it changes. For a long time, it was all about the big engine bikes, the BMW 1200GS, the Yamaha Super Tenere, and the Triumph Tiger Explorer. Then more recently, the market got all excited about smaller engines and bikes like the CCM GP450, and more recently, the BMW G310 and the Honda CRF250 Rally have been the talk of the town. But right now, the middleweights are making a comeback. There is, of course, the Honda Africa Twin. Triumph have just done a full refresh on the 800 Tiger. And waiting in the wings for later in the year, there's the KTM 790 Adventure and the Yamaha 700 Tenere. And there was absolutely nowhere on earth that BMW were going to get left behind on this. So here's what they've got to offer. It's the F850GS. The old F800 was, and how can I put this politely, it was dull and boring. And every time BMW made a change to the engine, which technically should have made it better, in my view it just made it even more dull. And those looks became so outdated. They needed to make a bike from the ground up and that's what they've done with the 850 and they've made it very off-road oriented. Both versions of the bike have got a 21 inch front wheel. They've moved the position of the fuel tank so it's better in terms of the centre of gravity for going off-road and they've kept a steel frame to keep it nice and rigid. Now the looks, well I think it's a lovely looking bike, much much better than the old 800. However, how much better does it ride on the tarmac? Anticipation is a funny old thing. And I'm not saying that the BMW 850GS wasn't eagerly anticipated. It was, but in comparison to the Africa Twin a couple of years ago, the buzz around the 850GS just seemed a little bit more muted. It was like the difference between waiting for Mission Impossible Rogue Nation and the Christian Bale's Batman. One is the latest version of a long-standing model, and the other is a reboot of an 80s classic. Or maybe that's just my perception of it. However, if you were expecting just another in the line of middleweight GSs, you'd be wrong. Okay, so yes it is the latest in a line, but it is a totally new bike. Do not get this machine confused with a 750 GS. This is very, very different. The 15 litre fuel tank is between your thighs to optimise the centre of gravity. And there is long travel suspension mated with 21 inch wheels at the front to leave you in no doubt that the designers were building a truly dual sport bike with great aspirations of the tarmac. Before I get into my thoughts on my first half day of riding this bike, before anybody starts saying, where's the adventure model? Why aren't you riding the adventure model? Because there isn't one yet. You've got the standard bike and you've got the sport, which I'm riding here. I can't believe BMW won't bring out an adventure model, but they don't have a date yet. So, half a day's riding, and what do I think? Well, I wanted to find out whether this bike is a world better than its predecessor, the 800. I mean, it looks a world better. And my God, does it ride a world better. It is such a laugh to ride on the road. And I'll talk a little bit more about that right at the end of the review. I think the 
the thing that really, really struck me was probably how much fun it was to ride off-road. And I haven't done anything spectacular off-road, it's just been gravel tracks. But it feels so competent. It reminds me a lot of actually the Africa Twin, because when I first rode that off-road, that felt incredibly competent. But whereas the Africa Twin disappointed me on the tarmac, so far, this is not. I had my pause on the Sport model, which gives more riding modes than the standard one, as you'd expect. Specifically, Enduro and Dynamic, heated grips and plenty of pro-level wizardry, including ABS Pro, Gearshift Pro, and even an Enduro Pro riding mode. On the road for the sum of 10,650 quid. As you'd expect, you can get an Acro exhaust if you want just that little extra bit of bark, and if you want to hear the difference between the two, the BMW website lets you listen to both exhausts. Neat, eh? The TFT display is very tidy and easy to navigate around. For anyone concerned about this being a tall ride, there's a whole host of seat benches with differing seat heights and you can even have the motorcycle suspension lowered. The extras do not stop there. You can swap the plastic engine guard for an aluminium one. You can opt for a touring package, comfort, dynamic or even a lights package. There is plenty to spend your money on. This bike is 95 horsepower, bringing it very much in line with the Africa Twin and the Triumph Tiger, but it feels a lot quicker than the Honda, and if you like twin engine bikes, I'd say it's got a bit more character than the Tiger. It's also pretty light. Fully fueled, it's a bit heavier than the Tiger, but lighter than the Africa Twin. Well, I can summarize this bike pretty quickly. It sounds fantastic, almost like an enduro bike when you're giving it some rally. I think it looks gorgeous and it rides fantastically, whether you're riding it on the tarmac or you're riding it off-road. And against the bikes that you can currently get, so particularly the Tiger 800 and the Honda Africa Twin, I would 100% go for this bike. 100% clear cut. There are a couple of other bikes waiting in the wings that could complicate it the Yamaha Tenere 700 and the KTM 790 Adventure, but they're still a few months away. So the question of whether I would have one of these in my garage right now is yes, I would. All Metal Mule panniers are designed and manufactured in the UK. Metal Mule, engineered to be different. Proud sponsors of the bike reviews on Adventure Bike TV.